to the right lane, ladies and gentlemen. But now I'm stuck! And now I'm stalled! Oh no! <laughs> so what I do is I just put the clutch down, start the car again, don't panic, and then gently raise the brake, gently raise the clutch, and the car doesn't move because it likes to put that goddamn annoying handbrake on. <laughs> Welcome back to Day Crew, and yes, we're here at Greenford again. This time, we're here to look at some hills. Uh, the car's telling me to go into neutral. Right, I'm in neutral. You happy now? And then what happens if I release the brake in a manual car? Yes, I'm in a manual car, ladies and gentlemen. If you saw the last video at Greenford for the Rainers Lane route, then you'll know how much I've been bitching and moaning about being back in a manual car. Now, I'm here to try and help, guys, so I'll try and keep the uh, swear words to a minimum and show you how to drive a test route here at Greenford. The test route we're going to do is Harrow on the Hill, which is absolutely gorgeous, so you have some nice scenery along the way. Now I'm starting my driving test and there are actual um, people starting the driving test behind me here at Greenford. I'm going to go up the hill which is very steep and I'm going to start by showing you how to do a hill start on a very steep hill. So before I move away guys I must make sure I do my prepare, observe, move routine and do my all round observation six point check uh, throughout the mirrors and round into the blind spots to make sure it's safe. I'm now finding the biting point and releasing the brake, which is not the correct method, but this car is hideous, so I'm just trying to get it to move. And now, slowly moving. Watching the vehicle in front, is it slowing down? Yes, if it's slowing down, and especially if it's moved over, what do we do next? We move, we keep going, we do not stop. We don't stop ever. We try to keep going if we can and it's safe to do so. So here we are, look at this hill. Now the exam has asked me to pull over and stop on the left just before the next lamppost, okay? Or where that raised curb is, that's even better. Now that gives me roughly one car length from this vehicle in front. Now if anybody knows me, holy smoky monkeys. Look at that Corvette. That is absolutely gorgeous. Wow, beautiful car. What is it doing there? Okay, um, oh god, this feels so awkward. So I'm about to do an uphill start, ladies and gentlemen, and I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm holding the brake because I'm terrified, for one. Um, right, let's sort this out. So first of all, I'm going to get rid of that signal because I need to think about what I'm doing. Uh, make sure I'm in first gear. So over to the left, up. There we go, that's first gear, right? Now, I need to find the biting point first. So it's on hold, I can see it's on hold. So I'm going to take my foot off the brake slowly, just to make sure. Yeah, okay, it doesn't roll back. Now, I'm going to gently raise the clutch up to the biting point. And that seems to be safe. Uh, I can feel it vibrating, so I know I'm there at the biting point. Now I'm going to do my all-round observations and apply my indicator to tell people I'm going to move off. Apply the gas. Oh, that sounds so horrible. Oh, I feel like I'm killing the car. I'm frying that clutch. Oh, if an automatic car, you wouldn't get that, guys. You literally just take your foot off the brake and that's it. It moves. Simple. You won't roll back either. I don't need the signal here because I'm just following the road. Most people come back to the driving test centre this way and they drive down that dead end road there. So you know you're following the road by just staying inside the white lines. So it's really important you know how to read the road. It's like one of the most important parts of a driving test, that you read the road. And you look for road markings and lane markings so that you know if you're in the correct lane and you'll see any arrows that tell you it's a left only or a right only, as these are so important. On the last video, Rainer's Lane, one roundabout in particular on Victoria Road, everybody fails the driving test there because they don't see the left only arrow. They use the left only arrow to go straight ahead and then they fail the driving test. Oh my god, look at this uphill start. Went into first gear as I got here. Find the biting point, no traffic on the right. Release the brake, find the gas, add the gas, raise the clutch up. Oh my good golly. Why? Why, god damn it? All right, stop it, Scott. Calm down, 20 miles an hour. 20 miles an hour, focus, focus. All right, keep to 20. 20 is plenty, plenty what? 
All uh, right, my attorney advises me to make no comp. Plenty difficult to do. That's what it is. It's plenty difficult to do, especially when everybody around you, including the police and Comments down below if you think I'm going too far with what I'm telling you. But there's plenty of situations where we've all been doing 30 miles an hour. The cops are right next to us and it's a 20 mile an hour zone. And no one gives a god damn. Because these 20 miles an hour zones are absolutely redonkulous. Anyways, you've got to keep to 20. Look how wide this road is. Look where the pedestrians are. Segregated by a huge area of grass, trees... There's even protection for them, isn't there? I mean, how the hell is a car going to go flying over there, right? Even at 30 miles an hour, it, will it make a huge difference over there? Probably not over there, no. I could understand if the pavement was right alongside this road. Definitely would agree with 20 miles an hour all day long. But where the road is so wide, the visibility is so good, and it's been 30 miles an hour as far as I've been aware for years, and there's not been any major issues, not at 30 miles an hour at least, Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, now I'm talking too much. Mirror, mirror, signal. And we want to move over to the right lane, ladies and gentlemen. But now I'm stuck. And now I'm stalled. Oh, no. <laughs> so what I do is I just put the clutch down, start the car again. Don't panic. And then gently raise the brake, gently raise the clutch. And the car doesn't move because it likes to put that goddamn annoying handbrake on. So oh, I'm going to add the clutch, add the gas and then it will move it turns the the annoying handbrake off okay so there's plenty of features in this car which i don't think are actually helping me driving this manual car to be honest i prefer an old school handbrake so if i've got a manual car give me that handbrake all day long handbrake turns and heel starts amazing so there's a benefit to a manual car so for anybody that feels like i'm bashing them too much well, now I'm actually enjoying them if I'm on a racetrack and I can do handbrake turns and I can use the handbrake to do my heel starts and etc. like that. All good. But this car doesn't have a handbrake. This car has a automatic parking brake. So I think it, the car's kind of confused. It's like, am I kind of being an automatic car? Am I, am I or am I a manual car? I don't know what I am. Let me mix everything together just to confuse the driver even more. God damn it. If you're manual, just give me a bloody stick and a handbrake and then I'm off. All right. Now I need to go back towards Harrow on the Hill. So there's different ways of going. So look, say you miss a turn like I just did. Not an issue as long as you do it safely. Obviously, I would have received a driver fault there for stalling. Okay. Um, that would be a clutch driver fault, I believe. Uh, it's been so long I've been teaching automatic now. So if you stall, what does that go? Moving off safely or moving off control. So I would have had probably a move off control driver fault there. No danger caused. There wasn't really any cars behind me, immediately behind me at least. As I stalled, vehicles started to follow up. I was close to the traffic light. I'm excusing myself, aren't I? Okay, I take full responsibility. I stalled, I messed up, put my hands up, take my driver fault. If you want to fail me for it, fine, fail me for it. Next time I'm coming with an automatic. <laughs> All right, guys, so I've been here before. This is the route to Rainer's Lane, okay? But when I reach the first roundabout instead, I'm going to turn right, third exit. Now, right third exit is usually the most technical. So um, we're going to do our mirror signal position speed look routine. Now, the vehicle in front of me is signaling right, but there isn't a right turn. So what do we feel like this vehicle is going to do here? Well, let's wait and see. He's a van, so he's a very large vehicle. And look at what's happened here. So I'm not the only one making mistakes, am I? Um, this van is too large to do a full U-turn, so he's had to stop and reverse. Now, because of my experience, I knew that was going to happen. I saw his signal, paid attention. This is not a pedestrian crossing, so do not stop. If the pedestrians are waiting there, you keep going because you have vehicles behind you. So due to the experience, 20 miles an hour, Scott, 20 miles an hour, um, due to my experience, I knew that that van was not going to be able to make that U-turn after seeing his signal. Stopped, watched, saw what was happening, then made a decision. So that's called LADA, look, assess, decide, act. And with more learner lessons or more experience, you will see incidents like this so the second time you see it, you'll be more aware. 
Right, I'm in the manual car, so let's talk about the gears. I downshift the second gear as I was making my way towards the junction. Look, right, left, right. And the traffic on the right, I could read the body language, was actually going off the roundabout due to the wheels pointing straight at the exit. I knew the vehicle was going straight to the exit. Mirror, mirror, signal left. And spiral, guys. Spiral, relax the steering. So you come out to the left side of the roundabout as you exit. Okay, so looking ahead... We have lots of speed bumps, which usually indicate a 20 mile an hour road. And I also have the 20 is plenty annoying signs here on the lamppost on the left. So if we see here, the big arrow is boss, 20 miles an hour, Scott, stay at 20. This is how difficult it is. I've got to keep reminding myself, okay, keep looking for signs because at some point there'll be a speed change. Going through that section there, I had priority because I was the big arrow so the big arrow is boss so that is a priority sign there and that's quite common uh, at any test center there may be a narrow road okay that has these priority signs so at some point we may need to stop and allow priority to oncoming vehicles sometimes they stop and allow priority to us and it's all about reading the signs and looking for the road markings for the giveaway lines so that we know who needs to give way Okay, Scott, what I'd like you to do is to pull over and stop on the left in a convenient place. Mirror, mirror, signal left. Move in nice and gentle like an airplane landing at the airport. And by this tree, I know there's raised curb. So I can scan the road ahead and make sure that I know where a convenient or safe place is. That is the parking sensors or the radar. And it's registered the leaves coming out from this plant here. So it's not the curb or pavement, it's just the leaves. So if you have the sensors on your vehicle and they go off, then have a look out the windows. Make sure that you know where you are and what's going on. Because sometimes the sensors might be sensing something other than what you believe. So just double check by looking out the window. Technology is good, but I wouldn't rely on it 100% at the moment. So just make sure you do your own checks as a driver. Like I'm doing now. So I've prepared, found first gear, find that biting point. Now I'm gently holding the clutch. I'm off the brake. I don't have a handbrake. So I'm now looking around, making sure it's clear again. And then I'm moving off with my right signal as a gently raise the clutch gently add the gas and i start to alter that balance as one foot goes down the other foot goes up and that's the transition between the clutch and the accelerator as you move off in first gear okay when you get other gears like second uh, or third so i'll do third now off the brake down on the clutch into third gear that's it don't even need the pedals Oh my god, look at this! Right, we talked about the sensors earlier. And they're going to go mental here. Now, clutch control. A little bit up. A little bit down. A little bit up. A little bit down. A little bit up. Oh my god, I'm going to stall. Right, how is this? Is this good, guys? Look at my sensors. Yeah, red, flashing red. Look at that pole. Look at the gap between that pole. Now, if I stay straight with that gap, I know I'll pass through. Now, it's flashing red on both sides. I have a car behind me, which might start beeping. I've got to do all that decent clutch control. The reason why it was rumbling there, I was in second gear when I went through there. Anyways, because I was so delicate on the clutch, I actually kept control of the vehicle. Look out the windows. Like I said, got the sensors, but look out the windows. We saw the gap between the right mirror and the right pole. That gap is so it will suffice, it's enough, it's a good distance. That way we don't need to worry about the left because we're in a regular sized vehicle like a car, not an extra big one like a van or Range Rover or something along those sides. So that size. So that way we know if that gap's there on the right, we're okay. Now I knew this car was coming, so I slowed down early. I'm doing my best to give them room by moving over to the left but I'm not moving too far over to put myself in a dangerous position. Now we may have more oncoming vehicles. Look, this is a blind bend. So I'm at 19. Let me go down to 15. Keep second gear, that's second gear. Just double checking by raising the clutch up and down and going back into second gear. Um, and then I'm 20, 12, sorry, 13. Now I'm just start to go faster. 14, 16 miles an hour, 19. Now start to brake, slow down till I can see. 
Now I can see off the brake and then start to accelerate. So BBB, brake before bends and then accelerate for straights. Only use the accelerator when you know you can keep the accelerator on. So don't go on and off the accelerator. Keep the brake on, let the car roll, let the car glide through the bend or brake through the bend. So BBB, here we go. So I'm going to start to slowly brake. 17 miles an hour, 15, 14, off the brake, just let the car roll. Now I can see, now I go on the gas. Now I can keep the gas on, 16, 18, 19, 20 miles an hour, off the gas, let the car roll. So I don't need to keep my foot on the gas pedal. When I did teach manual cars, oh my God, my brain would just melt because all the time people are using first gear, second gear, revving up at the moment. Look, look at my revs. One 1,000 revs, that's idle. That's me not using any petrol whatsoever, just the petrol that goes through the engine to idle the engine. Why do we need to add gas if we don't need to add gas? Right? Okay, at the end of the road, turning left, mirror, mirror, signal left, down on the clutch, brake on to stop, back into first gear, even though it's in first gear because I like to check, right, left, right, and that's the joys of a manual car. It's like constantly like... Am I okay? Am I all right? Let me see, what gear am I in? I've had experienced drivers like myself, even more experienced than myself, fail their driving tests for rocking up in a manual car, right? Coming to a roundabout in third gear, stopping, moving away at the roundabout in third gear, stalling on the roundabout with traffic coming towards them at like 20, 30 miles an hour because these are dual carriageway roundabouts. Oh, why would you even want to put yourself in that situation? How on the hill, right, mirror, mirror, signal left, keep close to this bike lane, okay, so slowing down, brake, clutch down all the way, stopping, clutch down all the way, brake on, squeeze the brake to put the hold on, then I'm moving myself over to the left and up into first gear, literally, I can't even hold, my back is killing me, right, gas on, clutch up, biting point, pass the all the way up, gas on, second gear, clutch down, into second gear, up, Clutch down into third gear, up on the gas. Clutch down into fourth gear, up. We've had a speed change of 30 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour, fourth gear. And I'm going to keep fourth gear because it's a very steep hill. Now, going up and down hills, you want a lower gear. The lower gear is going to give you more torque. It's going to give you more power to go up the hills. And the lower gear is also going to give you what's called engine braking, which will allow the car to stay at a speed or not increase the speed, providing we're not accelerating. Now, let's slate the automatic car now. So if you're in the automatic car and you're going down the hill, you're not going to get the engine braking. It depends what mode you're in. So in this vehicle, we've got different settings. All right, look, it's telling me to shift down. Cl uh, off the gas, down on the clutch, third gear. That was first gear. Now I made sure I felt that, and then I went into third. Took me too long to change gear, so now it went second, so I lost speed. Now I'm into second, so I've had to bloody change gear twice because I'm slowing down because of gravity while I'm changing gear. So if I don't do it at the correct time, I'm going to slow down even more, and then I'm going to have to change gear again, and then I'm going to have to reconsider if I really want to be driving a manual car because I forget it. You know, I almost swore there. I'm not going to. Right, follow the signs how on the hill, mirror, mirror, signal left, I check my shoulder, move over into the right lane, into the box junction in the centre of the road to turn right. Check the traffic, there's a car coming, can you see this bend here? So with this car coming, I want to make sure that it's safe, there's no cars before I cross over to this other side here to how on the hill. We have a speed change, looking down at the gear lever, make sure I'm still in the gear, checking all sides, gently up on the clutch. Now that I'm past the biting point, accelerating a bit more, and now I have these signs again. Remember the big arrow is boss. So we've got this oncoming traffic as boss, no oncoming traffic, off the gas, down on the clutch, into second gear, up on the clutch, and let the car roll. Have a look ahead, what's happening? Okay, I can slightly increase my speed because I can see more, I've got more space. Less space, less speed, less see, less speed. They're the two golden rules of driving. If you apply those 
um, you will be a safe driver, okay? It's just about getting the control. Here, it's my side of the road. It's my priority. Even though he's a huge bus, I must keep going because there's a vehicle behind me and there is enough space to keep going. So that's why I must keep progress and not impede the traffic behind unless it's absolutely necessary. So a lot of people feel like, oh, how do I know if I need to keep going? How do I know if I need to stop? And this used to frustrate me a lot. So the main point about oncoming traffic is look at their speeds. If they're increasing speed, most likely you'll need to slow down and stop. If you have doubt, don't, and know the size of your vehicle correctly. Oncoming traffic has priority, clutch down, first gear, make sure it's clear, up on the clutch, gently on the gas, juggle the biting point and the acceleration, and then gently down, in the clutch, on second gear, up on the clutch, back into the revs and off. Now, here we have a school, Harrow on the Hill school, or Harrow school, and we have um, a zebra crossing. So depending what time of the day you come here, you may have plenty of school kids, and they use that crossing like mental. So just make sure that you take caution of any uh, pedestrians nearby crossings, if they are about to use the crossing, you must slow down and stop. If the crossing has an island in the middle, like this island, this is not a crossing, there's no signs, no markings to say it's a crossing, but if it has an island in the middle, that's just a safety area uh, for pedestrians to wait, but if the crossing itself, like a zebra crossing has an island in the middle, you probably already know this, it is two separate crossings. So providing that the pedestrians are just using the other half of the crossing, you may proceed. If they're using your half of the crossing, slow down, stop, allow them to finish using the crossing before you go. Turn right at the traffic lights, mirror, mirror, signal right. Now this next part, uh, point of the test, or part of the test, is the Northwick Park Roundabout. And the Northwick Park roundabout is a spiral roundabout. Yet, I'm going to have a little bit of a gripe now. The road markings are invisible, so you will not see them. The best way of judging what lane you need to spiral into is the actual color difference of the road itself. When we get to the roundabout and go on to the roundabout and we turn right, third exit, following the signs towards Wembley, which is used as an independent drive at Greenford Test Center, then you will need to know this layout. You'll need to know exactly how to do this roundabout and I'm about to show you. So take notes and rewind the video if necessary to see that light section of road which I'm about to show you on the cameras here. Okay, so as I'm approaching Northwick Park roundabout, the examiner asked me to follow the signs of Wembley. So Wembley, here we go. Right, as I approach the junction, remember your mirror signal position routine. It's so interior mirror, external right mirror, signal right, roughly five car lengths from the junction. Start to position into the right lane, start to slow down. So that's the speed, and I'm gonna stop. Because look at the traffic here. This is where I'd love to have my handbrake. Find your biting point, add your gas. There's a big gap, and on the gas, up on the clutch, and go! Go into the right lane, and then here, there's a very faint road marking, and look at that light patch. This is my lane. I spiraled from that right lane into this center lane, which says Wembley. Now we've passed the first and second exit. Here I'm going to keep to my lane. Mirror, mirror, signal left. And look at this car over here in the blind spot. Can you see him? Can't see him in the mirror, but he's over here in my blind spot. So I'm going to keep this right lane, and then I'm going to be able to just avoid slowing, stopping, or swerving that vehicle. So it's not safe for me to go into the left lane. Therefore, I will keep to the right lane as I exit the roundabout. If it is safe for me to go into the left lane, then I will slow, make sure it's safe, move into the left lane, and then continue to follow the left lane. Now, these two lanes are going to merge ahead. This is just inside knowledge. So therefore, there's no real rush for me to try and get back to that left lane as I know these two lanes will merge into one. So if we have a merge, which we will, it works like a zipper. So if you're from Sweden, then you'll know this is the zipper method. So one car in front goes, then I go, then the car behind me goes. And that works like a zipper.
okay? Now, some people try to break the zippers, so do watch out for those people. Now, as I've been talking to you, I've been changing from first to second to third gear as I was merging, checking my left side there because the left side was where that merging traffic was coming from. The zipper worked. No one broke the zipper. I could see that. Maintain my speed, so I'm flowing with the actual traffic flow, uh, which we have. I've made mistakes on this in the past, so... One of the faux pas that I have is not seeing speed signs. Normally, speed signs, and this is the difficulty I had and still sometimes do have, speed signs at the entrances to new roads. So they're at the very beginning of a junction. Okay, so there's a 30 road, there's no signs. I've had this little indicator here tell me 30 slow down because the vehicle in front was going a bit quicker. So that's nice to know. Now I know it's definitely a 30. So at some point that speed limit changed back to uh, 30. That was where we actually came down Harrow on the Hill Road. So, uh, or Harrow on the Hill, sorry, down as we approach the traffic light. So I know that, that's really nice. Well, I'm gonna go towards Wembley. So this is the independent drive to Wembley. If the signs are hidden, your examiner normally will tell you where Wembley is or wherever the direction is. Down, block change, second gear, holding the brake on, changing into second gear as I'm holding the brake. Look to the right, it was clear that traffic was very far and slow, so I took the advantage. Interior mirror, left mirror, and exit. Now notice, and rewind the video if necessary, how I used the steering and spiraled off of the roundabout. I didn't keep into the inside, I started to move out and towards the left as I exit the roundabout. Okay, so that's super important. Now, this is a 30 mile an hour road. I'm gonna to continue to follow the road ahead. There will be more signs to Wembley, so I must make sure that I'm constantly vigilant looking for these signs to Wembley. Remember, if you're not too sure and you want to ask your driving test examiner, have I missed a sign, then maybe just you know i'm sorry i feel like i missed a sign can you help me look for the straight arrow as i'm going straight ahead this is this lane and now i'm using the correct lane to follow the road ahead and uh, talking about the examiners at the beginning of your driving test normally your examiners will say to you at all times follow the road ahead unless road markings or signs state otherwise so if i found myself worst case scenario back there at the traffic lights in the left only lane where must I go? Now, this is a change of speed, 20 miles an hour. We've had the road marking there with 20, and we've had the sign, or we have the sign up here on the left. This is what I said was something that I wasn't too good at doing, and sometimes these speed changes are in junctions, where you're looking at the road layout, you're looking at the traffic, taking in all the hazards, and then bam, you've had a speed change, and possibly, if you're anything like me, looking at all the other hazards, not had time to actually look up at the sign. I really don't think it's reasonable, but I understand that it's a legal responsibility to show the change of speed, especially if you're entering a new road, because that's most likely gonna be a different speed limit. So that's where you would put the sign. But, oof, man, it's a lot, isn't it? You gotta, you gotta make sure you're focusing on lots of stuff when you're driving. Now, when you do start to drive, this does feel like a lot maybe even getting headaches that's how much you're thinking but as you do anything in life the more you do it the more easier it will become eventually you'll start to think less and this is the stage where you know you're progressing as a driver and gaining more experience continuing to follow the signs towards wembley slowing down brake 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 from third into second right left right Early vision, early decision, seeing the car on the right, steering off the roundabout. I'm adding the signal which may benefit other road users to show them that I'm exiting the roundabout. However, I'm going straight, so possibly might be given some kind of a relaxation there as I'm going straight. Possibly the signal isn't really necessary. Now we've got a merge here, so I'm checking over, seeing that this car's holding, but look at this man on the crossing at the same time. So I've got to juggle these. Is this guy going to run out on the crossing? Yes, he is going to run out on the crossing. There's a hazard perception video. I'm checking my mirrors and around just for any motorbikes or other road users that might try to filter through as I was waiting in that traffic at that zebra crossing. Here's a green light that might turn red. Check my interior mirror to see who's behind me for any change of speed. So any green lights that you see that could potentially turn red, obviously check 
check your interior mirror early. That way you will know who's behind you early, be able to brake and adjust your brake pressure according to the situation. Now we're not following signs to Wembley anymore guys. I'm going to take the third exit, that's the end of this independent drive, going back to the test centre, turning right. Interior mirror, right mirror, block change or change down to second, brake on. Clutch down, early vision, early decision, into second gear, back up on the clutch, back into first gear, changing in, uh, sorry, second gear, changing into third gear, clutch down, into third gear, clutch up, gas on. Now I'm passing second exit, interior, exterior, watch the steering, glide. Look at that, that's all it was, just released it, okay? Obviously need to add steering here to take the left, and that's me finished the roundabout. This is a tunnel, guys. I checked the right mirror as I moved into the center of the road for my change of direction. Tunnel is a row of parked cars on both sides. Check to see if someone's ahead, and if they are, like the white vehicle, have they entered the tunnel? If they had, we needed to wait at the entrance to the tunnel, which is immediately after you exit the roundabout. So if you don't know that's there, and you're not familiar with the area, boom, there you go. Faced with a tunnel and meeting. Here, you can use your reference points, so if you take... Whoa! Oh my god, manual cars are horrendous. Hold the clutch, hold the clutch. Oh my god, it's like being at the gym. Holy shisa. Right, you can use reference points. So look at the window seal. I'm going to shut that up because that's annoying. Look at the window seal, see the curb. If the curb keeps at the same line as you're moving, then you're staying in the same position. If you get that line in that position and you know that's the correct distance that you need, then you can use that as you pass through width restrictions. You can also use that for pulling over and stopping on the left. So if you have a decent driving instructor that's teaching you correctly, then you will have reference points. And this may help you for pulling over and with these horrendous width restrictions. So let's have a look at that reference point which was somewhere here on my windowsill ledge, yet my curb is lined up with that point. That looks good. And I can use the one on the right. So here we have a signature. We have a white line. That white line gives you the signature. That's my reference point. Slowly keep going forwards, keeping the reference points in line. Check the distance with the pole in the mirror. That looks good. That means we've got more or less equal distance on the opposite side. And then that's me. Just keep the steering nice and straight. Gently drift through. If you've got blind spot mirrors, you can check those to refer to your distance. Checking my gear. Oh, it was in second, so I'm putting it in first as I went really slow. And making sure that I don't stall again from using the incorrect gear to move off. Okay? Super important. I told you about that earlier. One of my other drivers, my students, uh, he must have been in his late 40s, driving all his life illegally. And then he goes to do a driving test because he's been pulled over way too many times now. And then he goes and fluffs it all up from using third gear to enter the roundabout. I mean, what more can I say? Um, okay, now clutch up. Now I'm going to stall, right? Clutch up, biting point, off the brake. And I stalled! Oh, give me my handbrake back. Put it on hold. Clutch up. Biting point. Gas on. Maybe I just need to use that hold more often. Okay, it just doesn't feel right. I don't I want my handbrake back. Okay, red light. Stop. Brake. Clutch down. Back to first gear. Back to biting point. Hold technology on. Add the gas. Add the clutch up now. Put the gas down more as I raise the clutch up all the way. Clutch down again into second gear. Clutch back up again. Add the gas again. 2,000 revs into third gear. Stay at 20 miles an hour. Off the clutch. Right in the gas a tiny amount here to stay at 20 big red monster coming towards me less space less speed off the gas down the clutch into second gear up on the clutch getting the engine braking using the gas just a tiny bit 17 miles an hour maintaining one meter from the left checking the left mirror moving over to the left for change of direction into your mirror right mirror for slight change of direction keep it to the right meter from parked cars stay at 20 miles an hour stay at 20 miles an hour Stay at 20 miles an hour. And around about turn left, interior mirror, left mirror signal, and now moving over to the left in second gear. Second gear is good, but you want first gear for this downhill roundabout. Traffic on the right, have to stop to give priority to the right, double check, right, left, right, and then I'm off the clutch completely 
using engine brake in first gear. This is why you need first gear for this roundabout. It's a very steep downhill. At the beginning of this video, we talked about people accidentally not reading the road markings and going into the dead end. That's the least of my worries at the moment as I have an oncoming vehicle. Interior mirror, left mirror, move over to left, brake, 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 slow, 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 five miles an hour, five miles an hour, three miles an hour, two miles an hour, one miles an hour. Have I stalled? Have I stalled? No, I haven't stalled. Right, interior, exterior right mirror, safe, do a blind spot check because I'm just like that, and then move gently, not fast, because I go too fast. If I jump the clutch, woo, I'm going into the parked cars. I've had a few people fail the test here because they don't pay attention to the parked cars on the left. So look at the parked cars. Keep scanning, guys. One meter from the left. One meter from the left. One meter from the left. Now read the road markings. One meter from the left. Don't look down there. I mean, if you do, just look for a second. But one meter from the left. Ooh, what's this? Road markings. That's a dead end. No, I'm not going in there. Do I need to signal? No, I don't need to signal because I'm just staying in the lines, following the road. Why am I holding the clutch down? Clutch up, engine braking. If I hold the clutch down, I'm going to start going faster. And then one of the cameras dies. Then two of the cameras dies. And we're back at the driving test centre, so it does... Oh, that car is gorgeous. Look at them doing their uphill starts. Good luck, guys. If you're in an automatic car, you'd save yourself another 20 quid on an hour's or half an hour's lesson or whatever you pay. And then you would have more money in your pocket and less time consumed and less energy because it's just effort, isn't it, really? Who wants to make an effort nowadays? Really? Anyways. Okay, we're back at the driving test centre. Mirror, mirror, signal left. Pull over and stop on the left. Don't worry about driveways on this occasion. That is the end of your driving test. And you're a total F up and you failed. So get lost. Come back. Give us some more money. And we'll see you next time. If this video has given you any value, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Ding that bell. And I love you guys. Speak to you or see you or whatever.